Hello, dear students. I am Samir Velankar, and let's continue our discussion on conflict serializable schedule. Now, in the in the previous video, what what was the problem we solved was we were given two schedules S one and S two. Let me take you back to that topic. We were given two schedules S one and S two, both containing two transactions T one and T two. And we were asked, are these two schedules conflict equivalent? And we saw that these two schedules were not conflict equivalent. In in the previous video, we proved that these are not conflict equivalent, isn't it? But what if what if the two schedules are conflict equivalent? Let's say S one and S two are conflict equivalent, and one of them, like S two, is a serial schedule. You see, this is a serial schedule. Then, if S one is conflict equivalent to serial schedule S two, then S one is called Conflict serializable schedule, but in this example it was not. So we said it is not conflict serializable schedule S two. Sorry, S one is not conflict serializable schedule. Now in this problem you see here in this video, we are given a schedule S one which is surely a concurrent schedule, correct? Because you see, T one and T two, two transactions are running concurrently with interleaved operations, and we are asked, is this S one, is this schedule conflict serializable? Now, before I prove, which is very easy to prove whether this is conflict serializable or not, no rocket science in that. But then I, I'll tell you the complexity of what is what is given to us, and how difficult it is to solve. If you don't get a proper idea to solve this, I'll just increase the font. Question is: Is S one is this schedule conflict serializable? Now, when is a schedule called as conflict serializable? Come again. We say S one is a schedule which is conflict serializable if it is conflict equivalent. Check the word. If it is conflict. Equivalent with some serial schedule, with some serial schedule, such that that serial schedule will also contain T1 and T2, the same transactions as we are talking here. So, if you want to prove is S1 conflict serializable, then you will have to take one of the serial schedules. What will be the serial schedules in this case? Observe, if T1 runs first. Okay, if T1 runs first and then T2 runs, then it will be all operations of T1 followed by all operations of T2. But this is one one possibility, isn't it? The other possibility of serial schedule is that T1 and T2 two transactions with T2 occurring first and then serially T1 occurring next. Correct. This is second schedule. And then you will have to find out whether this schedule S one given on the left is it conflict equivalent with this serial schedule? And the answer you will get is no. And if it, is it is it then is it then equivalent with this serial schedule? And the answer you will get is no. But then you have spent lot of time in checking whether this left hand side schedule, which is a concurrent schedule, is it equivalent to one of the serial schedules? Just tell me instead of T one and T two only two transactions. If we were given some schedule S one, S one which had three transactions and some operations interleaved like this, some operations like this interleaved, and we were asked, is this conflict serializable? Is this schedule conflict serializable? Now the biggest challenge here is that s1 is called conflict serializable if it is conflict equivalent with one of the serial schedules so but how many serial schedules are possible with t1 t2 t3 three transactions you know six schedules are possible because t1 can run completely then t2 then t3 then t1 t3 t2 and so on you will get you will get how many 
six such schedules, isn't it? And who knows that this S1 schedule, this S1 schedule may be conflict equivalent with one of these schedules. But then for that, you will have to check this long list of serial schedules. Good Lord, this is going to be a very, very cumbersome, very difficult job, isn't it? You can just imagine if we were given four transactions and they are interleaved with each other like this concurrently and we were asked, is this schedule conflict serializable? And then you will have four schedules and we will have four factorial, four factorial possible serial schedules with which we will have to check is S1, is S1 conflict equivalent with the first serial schedule? No, then check is it conflict equivalent with the second serial schedule? No, then check is it conflict equivalent with the third and so on. And good Lord, after checking all the serial schedules, you get the answer that it is not conflict equivalent. This is too bad, isn't it? So do you have any, any better method? Let's get back to our example here. I think, uh, yeah, the example one that we were talking about. Here we go. We want to know whether S1 is conflict serializable. What we do is we use the concept of precedence graph. Precedence graph. Now, how is the precedence graph used here is it's a directed graph where if there are two transactions T1 and T2, then each one of them is shown as a node of the graph. So had it been that there are three transactions, there would, there would have been three nodes. And now we see the conflicting operations occurring in this schedule. Let's start with the first operation of T1 as T1 starts first. And we see read A, read A conflicts with write A, same, same data item A, one reading, another writing. But then this conflict is from T1 to T2, isn't it? That is read occurs first and then write occurs in T2. So we will show a directed edge from T1 to T2. I hope you are understanding why directed edge from T1 to T2. Because as you can see that at the top here, read A and then later on in T2, there is write A. So read write is from T1 to T2, read write conflict. Next, there is a write A conflict, which conflicts with read A. But this is again from T1 to T2. And note that edge from T1 to T2, to T2 is already shown. We won't show multiple edges. Further write A with write A, observe. This is a conflict, right, right, on the same data item, but it is from T1 to T2. So we'll show an edge from T1 to T2. T2. It is already shown. Okay, continue with the next. Let's find out the next conflicting operations. Here we go. At T2 here, there is read A. And you can watch, you can watch that there is write A over here. Later on in T1. So this conflict is read A in T2 and write A in T1. So it is from T2 to T1. So we will show there is a directed edge from T2 to T1. Now wait a minute here. I would like to, I would like to just tell you one rule. When you are building precedence graph and if you see a cycle in the precedence graph at any point of time, just see there is a cycle. You can go from T1, T1 to T2 and then T2 to T1. Clearly there is a cycle. You can go from T1 to T2 and T2 to T1. So this is a cycle. If there exists a cycle in the precedence graph, you can immediately stop and say S1 is not conflict, not conflict serializable. Please dear students, many, many students, you know, just see this topic as so simple, drawing a precedence graph, but they don't understand the importance of what we are doing. That's why I've, I have spent first six minutes in telling why we are doing this. Why we are doing this? Ask yourselves again, what do you mean by S1 is not conflict serializable? It means this S1 schedule is not conflict equivalent with any, with any serial schedule, with any serial schedule. I hope you are understanding. Two serial schedules are possible. T1 runs first, then T2. Or T2 runs first, then T1. But if you check for conflict equivalence of S1, the given schedule, with any of the serial schedules, 
you won't get the equivalence. So S1 is not conflict serializable. Let's check one more one more example here. I I have described all this all these points over here. You can just go through this. Use the precedence graph to check whether the given schedule is conflict serializable in the precedence graph. Every transaction is represented as a node. Hence, there are two nodes T1 to T2. And for every conflict conflicting operations from Ti to Tj, like T1 to T uh, T1 to T2, isn't it? We saw the conflicting operation. There will be a direct directed edge from Ti to Tj. After showing all the conflicting operations, just check that if the precedence graph, in the precedence graph, if there exists a cycle, observe, if there exists a cycle, then the schedule cannot be conflict serializable. But if there does not exist any cycle, if there is no cycle in the precedence graph, then surely uh, the given uh, schedule is conflict serializable. I will tell you about this topological order of the graph. What is this called as? And this is another interesting thing that you can get from these, these examples. But then there is one more example or lots of examples. In fact, we will see about conflict serializability. Let's meet in the next video. Thank you very much.